Kielde water is the largest man-made reservoir in Europe. Um, it's 27 miles all the way around its shoreline and it holds 200 billion litres of water. And the reason that this reservoir was developed, literally, they began thinking about it the minute that Cow Green, which was the largest reservoir in the Tees Valley system, was because development had continued and we knew that we needed to carry on um, getting water. What was unusual about this scheme is that Kielder Water is quite a distance from the area that it was really designed originally to support and this is the first example really in our country of a water grid. The water travels um, down through a river to a place called Riding Mill and then it starts to be pumped through a series of aquifers and tunnels to get it into the next valley and then the next valley. So the water has got an 80 mile journey altogether. It takes around about a day for it to travel from Kielder Reservoir down to that first pumping station. And then beyond that, probably at least two to three more days to get it all the way down to Teesside. So you can imagine the complexity of the civil engineering that needed to be done to think about the size of the tunnels that were needed, the size of the pumps and the pressures that the tunnel was going to have to take as water is very heavy um, and how we would make sure that that would flow properly, you wouldn't get back siphoning um, and all the complexities that go along with that and also because the system isn't always actively used, how would it operate when the water was just being held in situ ready for the next time that it needed to move. So a heck of a lot to be thought about and it took around about 20 years to think through all these different challenges and then get the planning permission before the construction started. What's amazing about this for all of those engineers, I think there's about 1,500 civil engineers involved in this project from beginning to end, people who moved the stuff, but you know, the, the thinking about it and the calculation of what was needed, it probably was the most complex scheme that's ever been done in our country for sure and probably one of the most, if not the most complex scheme in Europe as well. Um, and it was ultimately opened by the Queen in 1982, um, but construction took around about six to seven years from the beginning of when we started to move the earth. The flexibility that that scheme brought us has really paid dividends as well as making the North East the most water secure area of the whole of the UK. We are the only area with a surplus of usable water. Other parts of the country are wet, but they don't have as much um, water that they're able to actually use. So that makes us a great place for people to come and do business, and in particular, big heavy industry. I think what's interesting is all these different facets of what is a scheme to provide water, um, but ultimately, if you plan that really well and think about it and the flexibility of it, then it can do so much more as well. The dam has a big water turbine on it, so we capture the power of the water as it comes out. It's got England's biggest water turbine in it, which allows us to probably power a town of around about 11,000 people, but that just adds again um, energy supply into the North East as well. So I think, you know, from my experience of working in the water industry, every project can be really interesting and different, um, but then ultimately when it's delivered, you can see it, it's very big, the population and industry is benefiting from it and it will last for many, many years. So the legacy, I think, is brilliant. So if you ever wanted to do anything really important, and I'm not sure that is anything is more important than water to life, uh, then I think civil engineering in the water industry is a pretty cool thing to do.